A wave of viral infections has pushed Germany's children's hospitals to their limit. This winter, doctors' practices and children's hospitals were bursting at the seams. Some clinics didn't even have beds available at peak times. Die Situation ist so prekär, dass man wirklich sagen muss, Kinder sterben, weil wir sie nicht mehr versorgen können. There is also a shortage of antibiotics, painkillers and medication to reduce fevers. Production was outsourced to other countries to save money, at the cost of reliability. The chairman of Germany's hospital association said, right now we are seeing all areas of healthcare being pushed to their limits. How is this possible in a country that spends more on healthcare than almost any other country in the world? More than a billion euros a day. So what went wrong? Even though children's hospitals are currently in the spotlight, Germany's whole health system is affected. One major problem, there are colossal staff shortages. Hospitals like Berlin's Charité had to cancel scheduled operations. Only emergency procedures were carried out. Dass wir diese Belastung ja im letzten Jahr auch schon hatten in dieser Form und durch die ganze Pandemie hat ja viele Menschen auch daran zweifeln lassen, ob ähm, dass die Arbeit im Gesundheitssystem für sie noch ähm, die richtige ist. Und deswegen ist es eben leider auch so, dass viele Pflegekräfte nicht ähm, 30 oder 40 Jahre im Beruf sind, sondern oft schon nach acht bis neun Jahren den Beruf verlassen. During the pandemic, thousands of nurses quit their jobs. For the remaining staff, the situation is increasingly difficult, especially during the winter virus wave. We have the highest Krankenstände, die we je verzeichnet haben. And the Kolleginnen, die noch da sind, um, die schaffen nicht mal mehr das Nötigste. But the current virus wave is just the straw that broke the camel's back. The underlying problem is more fundamental. And spoiler, it's about money. How are hospitals financed in Germany? Up until around 20 years ago, hospitals were paid per patient per day. As a consequence, they could make more money by allowing patients to stay longer. To make the system more efficient, the so-called DRG system was introduced, short for Diagnosis-Related Groups. From that point on, hospitals were paid per diagnosis, no matter how complicated the treatment was. An incentive to treat patients quickly, efficiently and en masse. Certain procedures, like knee surgery, became more financially attractive and were performed more often, even if they were not always necessary. Losers under the new system, time-consuming specialist areas, like pediatrics and care. But wait, there are more problems. Since the introduction of DRGs, Germany's health system has become more focused on economics than on health. More and more hospitals, by now nearly 40%, are run by private companies. And their goal is to make money. Many doctors and nurses are frustrated by the working conditions. Overtime is common. Often there is not time to take a short break or even go to the bathroom. Es wird jeden Tag verlangt, dass wir unter unserem beruflichen Ethos arbeiten. Und das macht die Leute mürbe. Ärzte und Ärzte brennen üblicherweise für ihren Beruf. Aber wenn sie durch so hohe Überlastung beheizt werden, dann ziehen sie irgendwann auch mal Konsequenzen. Every fourth doctor in Germany is considering quitting their job. By 2035, more than a third of all healthcare positions could be vacant, a study found. Many are particularly frustrated about the high level of bureaucracy and a lack of digitalization. Nursing staff suffer from a lack of recognition, responsibility and low pay. And there aren't enough staff to plug the gap. And the gap is getting wider. Wir können seit vielen Jahren schon unseren ärztlichen Personalbedarf nur deswegen decken, weil Ärztinnen und Ärzte aus dem Ausland zu uns kommen und bei uns arbeiten. Ähm, sonst ging es schon lange nicht mehr, ähm, denn wir bilden deutlich unter Bedarf aus. Die Anzahl an Medizinstudienplätzen in Deutschland ist zu gering. But what's the special problem with children's hospitals? First, pediatrics takes more time. And that means money. Kinder und Jugendliche und auch ihre Eltern haben natürlich einen ganz anderen Betreuungsaufwand. Sie müssen altersentsprechend mit den Kindern und Jugendlichen umgehen. Das dauert auch viel, viel länger, als wenn sie einen Erwachsenen vor sich haben. The same level of specialists are needed in pediatric and adult care alike. But children's doctors treat less patients and aren't paid for being on call. 
Waves of infection that keep pediatric staff busy are more common in winter, meaning that during summertime they have less to do, but still need to be paid. Deswegen wird es notwendig sein, hier ein anderes Finanzierungssystem für die Pädiatrie zu haben. So, what is to change? To address the financial difficulties in the whole system, Germany's health minister, Karl Lauterbach, has announced what he calls a revolution in hospital care. He says he wants to put medicine first rather than economics. Payments per diagnosis are to be reduced. Instead, hospitals are to receive money for overhead costs, like staff and equipment. To operate more efficiently, hospitals will be arranged in three tiers, from hospitals providing basic care to highly specialized hospitals. Costly overnights are to be cut down by performing more procedures on an outpatient basis. With these measures, the minister hopes to use money and manpower more efficiently and thereby relieve the whole system. And for the particularly affected pediatric care sector, a 300 million euro aid package is planned. Critics fear that the reforms won't solve the staff shortages and that the issues relating to payments per diagnosis will still persist. So maybe this is not the envisaged major overhaul of the system, but a desperately needed new start.